The pros of living in an RV versus a car. I live full-time out of my car, I have for two years, and I often make videos about the advantages of living in your car, the simplicity, especially for a single person, and the flexibility that it gives you in life. But to be fair and to be balanced, living this nomadic life, I want to give you a video based on pros of living in an RV versus living in a car. So an RV, a recreational vehicle, whether it's a motorhome or, or travel trailer, the major benefit that it has over car living is full amenities, heating and cooling being the main amenity. So a climate controlled environment is the biggest advantage of living in an RV. That allows you to have pets, that allows you to have children, that allows you, even if you're a single person, to basically have the climate-controlled environment that you get in a house or an apartment, which is really the number one amenity of uh, a living quarters. And when you're living in your car or van, you're living very primitive, and I use a battery-powered fan, and uh, you can bundle up real heavy in the winter, and there's some supplemental things you can use to try to control the temperature, but you're in the elements and you're living primitive. When you go to campsites, you are a primitive camper um, when you check into the campground if you're living in your car or van. But when you live in an RV, you have full utility hookups. You have the ability not only to control the climate, but to take a shower, uh, to cook a meal, to use the bathroom. You know, I pee in a pee jug. So an RV, I mean, you have a, a toilet, you have a shower, you have more amenities. And that is a huge benefit, especially, obviously, if you had a child or a pet. But even as a single person, it's a benefit. Uh, now, to gain that benefit, you need the utility hookups. So that means you have to solve the problem of where to park, which it can be solved. I, I make videos that that's a huge issue, but there's two ways to solve it. There's two ways to solve where to park if you live full-time in an RV. One is you're going to have a home base, meaning you're going to own a piece of property that may or may not have utility hookups. You may have it in the middle of nowhere, but you may want to run your generator and you'd be willing to do that, which will give you the power to basically use all the amenities, but you won't have sewer or water. But let's just say you bought a piece of property and you put utility hookups on it, whether it's an RV lot or a piece of property in the woods, you can certainly do that uh, with a certain upfront investment. The other option, which is the cheapest option, and this, would, this is what makes me consider possibly RV living, especially down the future as I get older. Uh, because as you get older, it's something to think about that you want to spend less time on the road. And when you travel in an RV, you lose the fuel efficiency, but as you get older, you're not going to want to travel as much. So you may not want, you may only want to travel once a week or once every two weeks or whatever. So the other option to cheaply find a place to park that has full utility hookups is using some type of campground membership. The number one membership that I've seen promoted online that seems to be the most reasonable is the Thousand Trails membership. Um, now, depending on where you live in the country will depend on how many campsites are available in your area, but it's pretty much a camping membership that you pay $1,000 per year or less. I'm just giving you round numbers, $1,000 a year per less when it's all said and done. And that's your fee for the entire year. Now you have to move. I don't think you can stay at one campsite for more than 14 days. And there's restrictions around what campsites you can use, what campsites you can't, depending on your age and again, your location. So you'd have to research the Thousand Trails camping membership. But if you were willing to move somewhat and you had flexibility in the locations you would pick, if you paid $1,000 for the entire year, that includes you having a campsite basically with full utility hookups for all year. Your rent all year is $1,000. I mean, you can't beat that. And many of those campsites are nice. They have pools, they have laundry facilities. So there's ways to do this nomadic life and live full-time in an RV and have all the pros, all the pros of basically living in a regular conforming house or an apartment. Um, and that is better than car living if you want that. 
Uh, so I have to be fair. And I think as you get older, that's something to consider. But I would say look into that. Look into camping memberships. Look into the thousand trails. Certainly look into home bases if you had one area that you really wanted to be anchored down to and that you can spend some money and make it your own. But also, a career-wise, you still keep a level of flexibility living in an RV. So, you know, you can travel pretty much anywhere in the country. I mean, I live in America. Uh, this could apply to other lands as well, though. I mean, you could travel pretty much anywhere and change jobs, change situations, or visit people. And there's campgrounds with full utility hookups in most areas. Now, weather is a factor. Traveling in the weather is a factor. But if you plan things right, the biggest pro of RV living versus car living is you have the full amenities of a house. And if you plan things right, whether it's through a camping membership or or even, even most RV parks, I've looked into them. I mean, I'm in Florida, but even I looked into some in New Jersey. They range a decent one in a decently populated area would range anywhere from $600 to $800 per month. I've seen some as low as $250 per month. I've seen some as high as like $1,300 per month. So, you know, but if the average is if you spend six to $800 per month in rent, and some of those include electrical um, electrical fees included in that rent, that's still a great deal. And when you get an RV, you don't have to get a brand new RV. You don't have to get a $100,000 Class C. You don't have to get a $50,000 Class C. Uh, you can get a used travel trailer. Travel trailer is probably the most efficient because you can detach it from your towing vehicle and you can have it serviced and you can have it parked and you can still have the fuel efficiency of a car. Uh, you'll have the fuel efficiency of a pickup or SUV because once you set up your campsite and you drop your travel trailer off, you can ride a regular car around town to work or whatever. So when you have a class C or class B, yes, everything is all included so you don't have to tow anything. That's a benefit. The negative is you, you, you'd have to have a, a, a another vehicle uh, in order to drive around the town or to just, uh, you know, do errands, you know, because you're not going to want to do errands in a class B. Well, maybe a class B, but definitely not a class C. So it's, it's something to consider, uh, because class B's too, you're not going to find too many good used ones. So, it, you know, those are things to consider, but what, whatever type of RV, there are some used ones you can buy. You have to be very careful when you buy used class B's or class C's because they have motors and motors and all those components. That's when it becomes very, not cost effective to own an RV. A travel trailer is just what it is. It's just a, a a trailer on a piece of steel, basically, and you live in it. So it's not there's not a lot of motor components. There's little components, appliances that can go bad within a travel trailer, uh, but there's no motor. And a motor and the motor assemblies and all those things, that's the main uh, money um, pit that could happen with some motor homes. So a travel trailer in some instances could be better, even though you do have to tow something. But I want to make a video saying, look, I acknowledge that however you do it, RV living, if you live in an RV versus living in a car or van, the pro is you have full amenities. You have everything a house has, heating, cooling, running water, the ability to cook, the ability to shower, and that provides a, a, a certain level of comfort and environment that is to be noted. And it's to be stated. And, you know, there's trade-offs. There's trade-offs to everything in life, guys. But as you get older, if you want to pet or if you want to family, it's it's more feasible. And there's still cost-effective ways to do it. Um, again, whether it's with a camping membership, a cheap RV park rental. And even though you do give up a level of flexibility, because living in your car or van, the number one pro is you have maximum flexibility and freedom. With an RV, whether travel trailer or motorhome, you don't have as much flexibility and freedom, but you still have more than the average person. And it still gives you that flexibility to change states, to change locations for a job, to visit a family member, to travel. And that is something that is very valuable, in my opinion. Uh, again, whatever lifestyle you choose, you should calculate the cost. Food costs are big. Gas costs are big, maintenance costs are big, where you're going to park the rig is big. 
And I think most people don't really count the cost with their budget. I think most people, like I used to do, live paycheck to paycheck. 80% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck, even with the stock market at an all-time high. Why? Because I don't think most people actually know what they spend per month and actually know what they bring in per month. I think most people just care if they have enough to pay the bills at the end of the month and they're happy if they have something left over. I used to live like that. I think the number one step to financial freedom is not selling everything moving in your car. The number one step to financial freedom is to know your budget. Know how much you spend per month in food and everything else. And not just how much you spend on your cheapest day, but your cheapest day, your highest day, and every day in between, you have to have the average and you have to know how much you spend. And then you have to know how much you bring in. And for many people, they'll be shocked. They're running in a deficit or they're barely getting by. And so you don't have financial freedom by living in a car. You don't. You have financial freedom through knowledge, through knowing your budget, through knowing your expenses, through having a higher income than expenses. If you think you're going to buy some used motorhome, but you don't know your budget and you don't make more than $1,000 per month, I think you need to make at least $2,000 per month take home because you have to pay your bills. You have to save. You have to have insurances and you have to understand that there may be days. And as you get older, you, you're not able to produce an income. And right now, currently in America, if you make $1,000 or less, you live in poverty. And I don't know why it should be anyone's goal to live in poverty. It shouldn't be. If you're in a bad situation and you got no choice, then it's understandable. And there's no shame. But you should not. You should not have a goal of living in poverty. You should have a goal of living below your means so that you have financial freedom so you can enjoy this life as best as possible. So that's my video on the pros of living in an RV. But as I just broke it down, whether you live in an RV or whether you live in a car... The mindset, the information, and the uh, awareness uh, of your finances and of your life and living a life that inspires you, living a life that's exciting, not just a mundane life where you pick up groceries to go to a house that doesn't inspire you, to live in a state that doesn't inspire you just because your family was raised there, just because you're comfortable there. It took me two years to sell everything, to responsibly transfer my job and to do everything in order, but it all starts with downsizing. It does not start with buying an RV. It starts with throwing stuff out. Throwing stuff out is the hardest thing. You don't get any points for saying, oh, I just bought a new van or I just bought a new RV, but you haven't thrown stuff out. You haven't uh, you know, sold your house. You haven't liquidated. Liquidation is the first step to downsizing, not acquiring. Okay, So that's my video. Guys, I make daily videos. If you're not subscribed, I appreciate you subscribing. You can come in. I do live feeds just about every day. I appreciate you clicking the thumbs up uh, button on the video uh, to show some love and support and also to share the video uh, to grow the channel. Peace and love. Thank you for the support. Stay positive. Keep positive people around you and keep pushing forward.